So I'm Jared Unger. Um, lived in Georgia now for about three years, three and a half years, coming up on three and a half years. This is Colt. Colt will be four in November. He's an American Brittany. Came out of a breeder by the name of Doug Welsh, uh, the Masterpiece line. Um, he's been guiding for going on our third season now. So that's my hunting dog. We're gonna start a channel all about bird dogs. What do you think? All right. I do. So I think today we'll, we'll uh, work on basic commands, just a little refresher, get them in, in the mode, um, get them running and handling. Uh, I'm going to do some check cord work with them um, and uh, just take them from there. Just let them have a good time and remember what they do well. Yep. All right. Oh, man, how you doing, boss man? Man, your hair's looking wild. <laughs> I like it's it. Cute. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I've been trying forever. Originally from New Jersey. Um, it's where Colt originated. From. Well, Colt was born in Delaware. Um, you know, Andrews and I both moved down here. And I've been down here, like I said, about four years now. Um, got my start on birds on public land in New Jersey. It was stocked game. And I remember seeing my first bird dog work and at some point I knew that I'd have to make the move to get a bird dog too. There's still quail feathers coming out of my pouch from the season. You remember what we call the bell? The poor man's GPS? Oh, yeah. Uh, first time I went bird hunting, I think I was about 20? I think it's 20 years old. Um, first time I went hunting prior to that, I was 13, and that was for hogs. So. All right, so I think we'll start it kind of informal, let them run a bit, get a little bit out, and then put them on the check cord and start working them a bit. All right. Um, hobby, if you had asked me when I was 12 or 13, I would have told you I'd still be playing baseball, um, which I had a lot of fun doing growing up, but. Uh, I don't know, something about bird dogs has kind of consumed most of the time I want to spend in hobbies. So um, There's not really a whole lot of time to be great at a bunch of different hobbies I've learned as you get older. So I focus most of my efforts on bird hunting with my dog. Have you, have you went um, fly fishing here yet? Yeah, we just played two weeks ago now? No, it was longer than that. Probably about three weeks ago. Really? Yeah, I hooked into a big one uh, on sea. No, not here. Why, is it, that culvert help a lot? Uh, yeah. Y'all catch anything when y'all I hooked into a pretty good one. I, I fished with Dank. Yeah. He's the best you can get. <laughs> if you want, you can put this on him. We're on cold for a minute and we'll swap them out. <laughs> cold. Right here. Right here. All right. We're ready to turn them loose. Cold. Yeah. Heel. Heel. Why a Brittany? Oh, that's a good question. So at the time I was actually between a Vizsla um, and a Brittany and the Vizsla had a bit of a uh, bit of story behind it because they are from Hungary and that's where my grandmother's from. My, my dad's side of the family, they're from Hungary. So that's kind of why I wanted them as one of an option. Brittany's I had just talked to a lot of people and said that they're great all around dogs and I didn't want just a just a hunting dog and there's plenty of dogs that make great family dogs and great hunting dogs but something about Brittany's kind of drew me to them and I uh, I wound up giving up the idea of Vizsla because I heard they're bad with cats and he's terrible with my cat anyway so it didn't work out but um, I'm definitely happy that I went with a Brittany. He's been 
a great dog, um, super tentative, very smart, uh, and has taught me a lot as well. So, Colt, you ready? Come on. All right, let's go. It's good to cool down a bit today, a little overcast. We can work him without worrying about him getting too hot too quick. I know Colt's been itching. I'm doing some obedience work with him, but I haven't let him run in a while, so I know he's been itching for it. We'll get back at it soon. We'll be back on birds soon. And ramping up for guide season. How many hunts you wind up doing last year, Coleman? Do you know? Exactly a dozen. A dozen? Yep. And you didn't start, what, till halfway through February? Well, I did my first, I think I did two in December, and then I finished off in February. Gotcha. I mean, do you know? Uh, I think we did about 20 hunts last year. The year before, we did a few more. I think we did about 26 or 7. And then... You can only do weekends, though. Right. But we did get a chance to do quite a bit of wild bird hunting, too. So. I started doing some basic obedience with him before he had his first formal training. Um, he was about six months old and he went to go see Mr. Pete, uh, Pete DeAngelis out of Pennsylvania, who's unfortunately not around anymore. Um, but he spent a couple months with Pete, his first trip away with him. Um, and Pete missed, um, I'm sorry, Pete corrected all the mistakes I made with him learning. Um, and then he went back to Pete. When he's about a year old for almost four months and again Pete fixed a lot of my mistakes and I actually there was one point in time where Colt wouldn't point um, I was using uh, using scent for him basically just dead birds already to practice some scent work with him and he stopped pointing because he realized he could just go in and pick up the dead bird and there's no reason to point it and hold his point so Pete spent a lot of time fixing that and You'd never know at one point in time, Colt didn't want to point at all. So, yeah, Pete was a big mentor of mine. Um, I've learned a lot from him. Uh, even after I moved down here, Pete and I spoke every weekend, and he was kind of the one that gave me the, the courage and confidence to go guide. And even up till my first trip, I was still um, very uneasy about the idea, and he kind of gave me that little push I needed to start guiding. I think me and Andrews found a honey hole last season. Yeah, we won't reveal the exact coordinates here for everybody to hear about, but we'll uh, definitely have some film of it this year. Maybe we can all go up there and backpack in. Come on, Cole. Let's go. Um, since then, Darrell, is, Darrell Smith has played a big influence in a lot of what I've learned um, about guiding, about bird dogs, about patience and training, um, and growing as someone to help pass tradition on, um, and mentoring other people as well. Uh, so, you know, big thanks to Darrell at Sporting Life Notebook as well. Let's go! Come up! Yeah. They're a lot of money. Good kennels, but... Yeah, yeah, and they're kind of middle of the road priced. You know, not too cheap, but not too expensive either. Oh! Flips! Good boy. Alright, let's go! Yeah. Turn him and keep him running up this uh, window over here. Let's go! Come on! Come on! Good boy! What are you all planting this year? Yeah. ground at your house yet? Yeah. You know how many acres? 
Jersey flying this year? So now, you know, we'll let him run a little bit and I'll put him on a check cord, get a little more formal with him. Cole, come. Right here, right here. Wait. Let's go. Come on. So we're here today actually at Noontula Creek Farms. Um, awesome facility. I'm definitely slightly biased, uh, but they really do such a great job of keeping the feeling of being in a North Georgia area. I mean, between their guided bird hunts and their guided fly fishing, I mean, this is some of the best fly fishing you'll be able to do in North Georgia and I, I mean that honestly um, but there's just a lot of great people here as well uh, Emily T Greg a lot of people to learn from a lot of people that are willing to teach what they've learned and just give you the opportunity to uh, to learn more yourself you know T is the reason why I'm out here every weekend in the summertime training just because I have the ability to be you know he lets me come out here and his son and I, Coleman, uh, you know, get at it and put the dogs on the ground and get them learning and training, you know, try and keep them as steady as we can throughout the season. You right? As far as my tools, obviously my dog, and uh, I use an old LC Smith side-by-side. -side. It's a 12 gauge, featherweight, um, field grade with double triggers, probably close to about 100 years old, and uh, try to put some work in on that thing. Where'd you get it? Actually, Andros, uh, our, one of our cameramen, sold it to me uh, probably about four or five years ago now, and that is my field gun. That is my go-to gun. You mentioned Andros a couple times, how do you know him? Andros and I were hunting buddies back in college. Come on over here, Andros. Oh shoot. Um, so Andros and I met back at Rampo College in New Jersey. This was after I transferred from Vermont. And we got to talking about bird hunting and shooting and uh, we became really good hunting buddies and yeah. been hunting together since. And we immediately hit it off. We totally loved the bird hunting, used to skip class. and. <laughs> New Jersey just to go hunting for the day, come back late, looking all mud up and like a mess. But yeah, we're the only kids in New Jersey doing it. I'm glad we can <laughs> keep it going on. So. so you both live down here now, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you live together, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Come on. <laughs> best thing I could ever ask for. Yeah. Gotta live with my best friend. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, that's true. So yeah. so we're starting a uh, a YouTube channel. What do you guys think about trying to do a YouTube channel? I, I think, think it's a great idea. I can't wait. Yeah? Yeah. We're going to play with yeah. cameras all day. Yeah. Colt! Come here! Colt! This dog. Oh, someone's got other yeah, things on their mind. Go, go, go grab yeah. it. So, I, Colt! Andrews, I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah, Heel! I'd love to be uh, put on the spot. Heel! Yeah, we're going to wait for uh, the mic to be back yeah. close. Load up. Load up. Go ahead. Hey, buddy. Um... So, so Andros, yeah, yeah, obviously uh, you're going to be a big part of the YouTube yeah. channel, but you also uh, want to get more into birding, is that correct? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I absolutely have a passion with the bird hunting. I don't have my own dog, so I'm blessed that my roommate has one of the most kick-ass dogs ever. I think so, humbly. 
Yeah. But yeah, ever since I moved in with Jared, um, I actually moved down here, started going really hard in the photography thing. So um, right when I moved down here was the middle of Jared's hunting season. So I actually started just coming out, asking his clients if they were open to uh, me filming their, uh, their trips. You know, if they wanted to buy their photos, they're more than welcome to with me. And I just went hard on it. I had an absolute ball and I get to see the real, how the real work is done, especially at such a beautiful, uh, a beautiful farm like Noontula Creek. Some of the best guided hunts I've ever been part of. Just watching the dog work, I am the happiest person in the world, I gotta say. Awesome. But yeah, it's really been helping my photo exposure and I'm hoping to get into the film stuff, so. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. So both of you have been published, right? This is you correct. Andrews, Andrews beat me to it, actually. Oh, by Andrews, you yeah. went guys yeah. first. So what were you published in? Yeah, I'm a really humble guy. I hate to just it's put it out you, there, but uh, I was featured in a little article on some uh, traditional southern bird dog handlers. I had a great experience. I'm actually published in um, under Darrell Smith in um, uh, Field and Stream back in 2022, I think it was the first article this year. So yeah. either the last one in 2021 or the first article in 2022. But I I'm super happy with that. Yeah. Plus Darrell is one of the coolest guys I've ever met. So tell us about your uh, your experience writing. Um, so yeah, it kind of started out as a, as a journal. Um, I didn't really have any intentions of it going anywhere too serious. and. I guess I had been doing it for about a year and a half, just journaling a lot of my experiences along the way with bird hunting and trips with Colt. Um, and I guess it was about a year and a half into it where I decided to let someone read a little bit of what I had been working on. And they had seemed pretty impressed and said that I needed to go ahead and just share it with some editors. And I did, and they were impressed as well. And a couple of the stories got picked up. Did they actually pay you for them yet? Uh, no, I didn't get paid. I think it was um, pro pro bono is the word that I would use. Yeah. yeah. Um, Did they say it was gonna be pro bono. I, I didn't. I, it was never discussed in their oh, defense. There you uh, go. No, there there was. I, I just appreciated the opportunity to be very honest. Of um, and f coming from someone that had no intentions of publishing anything and really just journaling and doing what I wanted with it, um, to going to having an article with Project Upland was a super cool experience. So um, it's been a pleasure working with them. Um, it's been a pleasure working with her editor and learning from her as you know, a writing coach. And uh, it's been pretty cool doing some work with TRCP as well. So. Awesome. So question back at you, did you get paid? Uh, you paid? I, yeah. I, 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 I got paid. I got paid. They hooked me up, for sure. I'm happy with Field and Street. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Um, so you guys have mentioned Darrell. Right, yeah. Yeah. A times, so. Mr. Darrell Smith. Tell yeah. So Darrell, um, he was a hard man to get a hold of. Uh, <laughs> I had been. I, I found Darrell in one of my stupenders of the bird dog rabbit hole. Uh, I'd been just watching a ton of different bird hunting videos and um, episodes from various. Uh, shows and Darrell had popped up on one of the shows and he was in Georgia so I was like oh sweet you know I'd been looking for some people to link up with as far as bird hunting and you know kind of try and make some friends down here that were into it as well and people to learn from and so I found Darrell Smith on Facebook and I sent him friend requests I found him on Instagram I sent him a bunch of messages and I think it was finally about a year later when I actually heard from him um, and it was out of the blue and so we finally got to talking and he was a super cool dude. Um, we linked up and worked some bird dogs together. I think uh, the first time I hung out with Darrell, we actually we recorded a podcast together. Um, he's got an awesome podcast uh, under the Sporting Life Notebook. Great channel, um, a lot of good content, a lot of good guests. Um, and he's just been a, a, just a super good person, a, a really good friend, a good mentor, and somebody I can you know, count on that it was in the same boat as me and, you know, started learning bird dogs. At, I'm not going to say an older age, but we weren't the kids that grew up doing it. Um, and just to be able to share the ideas that it's something we both want to be able to share with other people um, and do what we can to pass that on is super cool. So. Okay, so what can we expect to see in the next few episodes? Um, so I think in a couple weeks here we'll have... 
hundred birds coming. Uh, Mr. Fletcher has been raising some birds for us to, uh, to get going in our training season. Um, we'll work on handling uh, also, but the main thing is once we get our birds, we can really fine tune all the mistakes that uh, we made throughout the season and kind of slow things down and put them in handled situations where typically I wouldn't be able to make all the corrections I want to make uh, if I was guiding a hunt. So yeah, a couple weeks we'll be on birds. Um, we got a hundred of them coming and you'll probably see a lot more of Remy and Coleman out with us. Uh, he's kind of my training buddy. And stay long enough, you'll get into our guiding season with us. I'm sure you'll see some of our trips and you'll definitely see some of our backpacking trips up into the North Georgia mountains to hunt some rough grouse. That's what I'm excited about. That's all I can say. Love to do some backpacking. And from a filming standpoint, yeah. what do you hope to accomplish? Um, I'm really excited to see where the channel goes. I really can't wait to just, you know, be out there, be doing it. I, I love watching the dogs work. Um, probably just more excited to get more uh, akin and more accustomed to my camera filming. I've been really wanting to take on the filming hurdle for a while now, and I think I'm going to just give it my best and. I think we're going to have a great end result. I'm really, uh, really excited for the channel. I think it'll grow a lot. You know, you'll get to see us butt heads maybe. But um, <laughs> it, it should be a lot. There should be a lot of action. Butt heads or be butt heads? But <laughs> me Stay being tuned, a butt you'll head, find we'll out. probably still butt heads. But yeah, <laughs> but, yeah I, I think this channel is going to be really awesome. And I think it really puts two great, great characters in the spotlight. I think there's a lot everyone can learn from. A growing pair of hunters like these two. So what do you want to ask people to do for you? If you uh, want to carry along the tradition with us, make sure you like, uh, <laughs> like we'll share, subscribe, uh, hit the bell mode notification.